I start in the very beginning to teach them because, I mean, most kids are interested to learn some new openings. Let's say you're interested to learn the Sicilian, for example, but have you ever asked yourself what's happening in the end of the theory? Usually, we have a typical situation on the board and every opening will leave us in a different typical situation. For example, if we start warning the Queen's Gambit decline, let's say, most likely we'll end up to the Karlsbad's pole structure. If we start warning, let's say, the, the Alapin against the Sicilian, which means e4, c5, c3 second move, like 99% of the time, we'll end up with the isolated pawn in the end. And actually, the, pawn, the typical pawn structures in chess, there are a lot, but the most important of them are 5 to 10. For instance, if you don't like to play the King's Indian defense, you don't need to, to study the King's Indian pawn structure, even though it's going to be very useful in general. So why the pawn structures are so important? Because once you know the main principles of playing the pawn structures, it will help you to deal better with your pieces, which means you know exactly the importance of different the different exchanges in the positions, you know the most standard plans, you know the typical tactics, which kind of positions are good and bad, what you should try to avoid. And this is way more important than warning the theory. So for me, if you want to warn one opening well, first of all, you need to, to, to cover the pole structure coming from the opening. Later on, you should study the theory. And after that, you have to spend some time playing the opening, getting some practice, experience. This is how we call this. Maybe you should work on your games, work on your weaknesses in this these games, and then you'll be ready to start using it as a pro. So the pool structures are this what I've tried to answer many times in the chat. The most often the most often question in the end of the lessons in the QA section actually is how can I improve my rating? What can I do to get a better chess player? And this is usually the question I need to answer all the time. Well, the answer is this, warn the pole structures. That will increase your chess skills with at least 100 to 150 elo points in a flash if you warn the principles well. It's not gonna be easy, but it's gonna be very useful. So, yeah, this is why you have to know them. If you don't know the pole structures, you can spend tons of time to warn some opening. You get the famous plus equal evaluation according to the engine, and then you lose it in two moves. Well, I guess your level is less than 2200 asking me this question for sure, because if your level is over 2200, it's going to be pretty much impossible to reach that level without uh, having a pretty good idea about the pole structures. So what should be your level? It could be all possible level. I mean, to warn the pool structures, it's like to warn the end games. What should be your level to warn the end games? Well, everybody needs to know the end games. Like everybody needs to know the pool structures. It's not something you can miss. It's like if I ask you, what is your name? And you're telling me, Amit, you must know it. You don't think about it. So you can't reach a good level in chess like 2000 plus, let's say, without having an idea how to deal with your pieces in different pole formations and different pole structures. You can't reach level of 2000 and more if you don't know the typical tactics like, like windmill, like discover check, fork and things like this. So this is simply a part of the game, different elements of the game, which if you don't know, you're vulnerable because the opponents will know that. And instead of saving your time and energy, during the game and playing something with confidence, you spend a ton of time thinking about something what the other knows. So it's really important for every kind of level. Simply, there are different levels for the different skills. Let's say if we start, I can tell you how I started wording the isolated pole structure. I mean, I started wording this pole structure seriously when I was maybe 12, 13 years old. Of course, I had some idea how to play it, but not such a good idea how to play it. And then I bought my first book about the isolated pole structure, which was exactly 326 pages. I covered the whole book and in the end of the book, I realized that I still don't know how to play it. Now imagine what it would be before the book. So, and th this what I will try to do is to give you all that 
in, in a few hours. And for those who are interested to be world champions one day, I will tell you, guys, it can be enough. You can get the most important from me, but you should keep working on it with the time, which means you keep getting better, you start playing games in the structures, you keep working on your games and analyzing your games. Do not expect somebody to make you a 2700 player in, in 10 hours or 20 hours. This is just the beginning of this journey, but this kind of beginning will, will help you to improve your chess skills quite a lot. So we're definitely going to cover the main pole structures, which means the isolated pole structure, the hanging poles, the symmetrical pole structure, which means e4, uh, d4 versus d5 without c and e poles on the board. Sicilian pole structure, it's a big topic, we can't miss that. Uh, the the ready pole structure, King's Indian defense, love defense. Well, let's say after this course, you'll be able practically to use 90% of the different openings in chess. And even if you mess up with the theory in some point, you have a pretty good idea what to do later. Because once you're familiar with the plans, the typical situations and ideas, that will help you to make a lot better decisions in the long run. So in some point of the game, the theory is over, but your middle game skills will help you to make better decisions to the end of the game or at least till the end of the middle game. <laughs>